Good morning. This is a little video just talking you through some of the questions in the WebAssign 5.3. So the first question is about dis the difference between displacement and distance. I can explain this by uh, if you wake up in your bed and you finish your day in your bed, your displacement is zero. But unless you stayed in bed all day, you've traveled distance. The distance is a positive number, the number of steps that you've actually taken. But displacement is signed distance. So if you walked uh, in a northern direction uh, 700 steps and returned back to your bed, you must have walked in a southern direction 700 steps as well. And that's landed you up with a displacement of zero. Um, how they're working this out with the maths is by saying the function has to be positive. So we take the absolute value of the function if you want to write it that way. You could just sketch this function and where the function is below the x-axis, work out that bit separately. And that's what's happening over here. They found that for this function, um, if you were to sketch it, you'll have a root at 4. So in the interval from 2 to 7, we would have to split it to go from 2 to 4 and then from 4 to 7. Because this part is above the x-axis, so we would work it out as it is, and you'll get a positive number. This bit is below the x-axis, so we change the sign of the function. Already you're saying change the sign of the integral, because when I work out the integral of the original expression, you get a negative. But you want to have that as a positive to add up and get the distance. That comes up in a question later on, number 1516. Right, so we've got... Basic integration questions, um, these are pretty straightforward. Always just be checking that when you've got a definite integral, there's no number in the interval that makes your function undefined. Um, tricks over here, don't try and integrate each part separately. There's no such rule. Um, you'd have to simplify first. And do the same over here. Multiply everything out first, then you've got individual terms. Sec of t all squared is just another way of writing sec squared t. Maybe if it's written that way, you'll recognize that as the answer to what you get when you differentiate tan t. So you do the um, definite integral, then substitute in. Something like this you can see in two ways. You can either bracket the 4x, um, and then you could say um, the integral of 1 over 4x is lin 4x divided by the derivative of the 4x. So divided by 4. Or you could separate out the 1 quarter and think of that as 1 quarter the integral of 1 over x. And then your answer would be the same. 1 quarter, well that wouldn't quite be the same, it would be 1 quarter lin x. And you might be concerned that 1 quarter lin x and 1 quarter lin 4x are very different looking things. Work it out, put these numbers in, you will be amazed that the answers are the same. Why does that work? Because lin 4x is lin of a product. You can write it as lin 4 plus lin x. What's, uh, and then that, that lin 4, when I'm doing the definite integral, would cancel out. Mm. If you don't know the rule for something to a power of x, where the base is not e, think of e to the x first. It's similar. The derivative of 6 to the x is 6 to the x lin 6. So the integral of 6 to the x is 6 to the x divided by the lin 6. Because if I had that, it knocks out the lin 6 I get when I differentiate. Uh, this is just an arc tan. If I remove the 6 out, I'd see it more clearly. And over here... Hmm... Oh... What I spot is I've got a single term in the denominator. Um, many terms in the top. Split the fraction. Make separate little terms. The second one's going to have beautiful cancelling. The first one's going to have 1 over cos, and that's 6 squared. Hmm. Okay, that's enough for this video.